In this video, we're going to quickly go over how to name binary compounds, that is compounds made from two elements. These can either be ionic, and contain cations and anions, or covalent, and contains covalent bonds between the atoms. So let's first look at ionic compounds. These contain a cation and an anion, and the cation is named first, and then a space, and then the name of the anion. The cation name is the same as the element, and the anion uses the first part of the element name with the ending "-ied". So let's take NaCl as an example. The cation is sodium, and that's named the same as the element, and the anion comes from chlorine. We take the chlor part and add "-ied". We end up with the name sodium chloride. Sodium, the space, chloride. CaO, the cation is calcium, and the anion is from oxygen. We take the ox and add ide to get oxide. Calcium oxide. Calcium space oxide. Mg3N2. The cation is magnesium and the anion comes from nitrogen. We take the nitra part and add ide to get nitride. Magnesium nitride. Notice that the formula is quite complicated but the name is quite simple because we can always work out the ratio Mg3N2 because we know that magnesium is magnesium 2 plus and nitride is N3 minus. Al2O3. The cation is aluminium and the anion comes from oxygen. We take the ox and add an ide to get oxide, aluminium oxide. Again, the formula is Al2O3, but the name is simply aluminium oxide. And here's some more anion names. Nitride from nitrogen, oxide from oxygen, sulfide from sulfur, fluoride from fluorine, chloride from chlorine, bromide from bromine, and iodide from iodine. Here's a test. Name the ionic compounds formed from the following pairs of elements. Magnesium and nitrogen, iodine and cadmium, strontium and fluorine, sulfur and cesium. Pause the video and see if you can do it. And here's the answers. A. Magnesium nitride. B. Cadmium iodide. C. Strontium fluoride and D. Cesium sulfide. How did you do? Rewind the video if you found this a struggle. In the compounds we've studied so far, it's been easy to go from the name back to the formula because we know the charges on the cations and the anions. However, some metals can exist in more than one charge state. We can have copper plus and copper two plus, iron two plus and iron three plus. So in these cases, we need to know what the charge state is. We know this because we add a Roman numeral as part of the metal's name. The Roman numerals are called the oxidation state. For example, copper 1 plus will be written as copper bracket 1. Copper 2 plus will be written as copper brackets 2. And iron can be 2 plus or 3 plus, and this is written as, as iron with a 2 or a 3 in Roman numerals after its name. Non-metals usually only have one oxidation state, so we'll always know that we've got oxygen as O2 minus. Sometimes it's necessary to use the oxidation state of the non-metal to work out just what the oxidation state of the metal is. So here's an example, CuCl. We know it must be Cl minus, so it must be copper plus. Copper plus is copper one, copper brackets one. And the chlorine, is take the stem as chlor, add ide, chloride. And the whole name is copper one chloride. Copper one is one word, space, chloride. CuCl2, now we have two Cl minuses, so the copper must be in the two plus oxidation state. Copper two plus, copper two. So the name of the cation is copper two, copper brackets two brackets. Again, we have chloride. So the whole name is copper two chloride. Copper two is one word, space, chloride. CuO, it contains one O2 minus, and so the metal must have a charge of two plus to match it. It's again copper two plus, copper two. The anion is oxide, so we have the name copper two oxide. Copper two is the name of the cation, space, name of the anion, oxide. One last example of an ionic compound, and a quite tricky one, Fe2O3. We've got three O2 minuses. So the overall negative charge from the anions is minus two times three is minus six. We have two ions. 
So to balance the charge of the anions, we must have two ion three pluses. To give two times plus three is an overall positive charge of plus six. So we've got ion three plus, ion three. So the name of the compound is ion three oxide. Covalent compounds are named in quite a similar way. We again use separate words for each element. This time, the element that appears first is the one that's on the left in the periodic table. And the other element is named just as if it were an anion by adding an ide to its stem. The difference is that we now add a prefix to the atom name to tell us how many there are present. We use mono for one, di for two, tri for three, tetra for four, etc. For the first element in the name, we'd only use di, tri, or tetra. We don't use mono. But for the second, we always add mono, di, tri, or tetra as appropriate. So let's look at some examples. CO2. We've got one carbon and two oxygens. Carbon's to the left of oxygen in the periodic table. There's only one of it, so we just write carbon. But there are two oxygens. So for oxygen, we know we have our oxide. We had di to mean two, carbon dioxide. Second one, CO. Again, we have carbon and oxygen, so carbon is named first. There's only one carbon, so we don't have mono, we just have carbon. But this time we have oxygen, we add the stem ide to get oxide. There's one of them, so it's carbon monoxide. Ni3, we have nitrogen and iodine. Nitrogen's first in the periodic table. There's only one nitrogen, so it just becomes nitrogen in the name. Iodine from iodine, there's three of them. So we have triiodide, nitrogen triiodide. SiCl4, silicon and chlorine. Silicon's on the left in the periodic table. There's only one of them, so we have silicon. We have chloride from chlorine, and there are four of them, tetra. So we have silicon tetrachloride. N2O3, we have nitrogen and oxygen. Nitrogen's on the left in the periodic table, so we'll name nitrogen first. This time we have two nitrogens, so we have to add a di to the first name. We have dinitrogen. We have three oxygens, and so we have trioxide. Dinitrogen, trioxide. Now we could apply this to all the compounds. We could have dihydrogen oxide, but we just call that water because it's so common. NaH3 should be trinitrogen nitride, but we just call that ammonia, again, because it's so common.